Is the new wave of new metal upon us? I think it might be making a comeback. Not only is Linkin Park back and in the mainstream again, but so far this year, lots of bands from the new metal scene have released albums such as Static X, P.O.D., Trapped, Mushroom Head, as well as the new Seether album, which also comes out this weekend. But in this video, I'm not going to talk about them. It's about the debut album by the band Vended. This is a band that features two members whose dads play in Slipknot, their vocalist Griffin Taylor, son of Corey Taylor, and drummer Simon Crahan, son of Sean Clown Crahan. So you might be thinking that this band screams nepotism. But in the kids' defense, they are pretty good musicians. They claim to be self-taught musicians and were not taught by their fathers. They also do not want to be compared to the band Slipknot, even though most people are going to do it anyway. The rest of the band consists of bassist Jeremiah Pook and guitarist Cole Epsland and Connor Gradinsky. My apologies if I have butchered any of those names. They have also released an EP in 2021 called uh, What It Is, Kill It, as well as a few standalone singles. The new uh, self-titled album was produced by Chris Collier, who has worked with both Korn and Prong and engineered by James Fluff Harley. The album has 13 songs. There are a few intro tracks that are about a minute or so, and the rest of the songs are into the three to five minute range. My first impression of the band was it sounded a lot, or it sounded a little like Slipknot at times, but not to the point where I would say they're trying to copy the band. I just thought that the album had a few moments where they sounded like the aforementioned band. There were other times where Griffin Taylor sings in a cleaner tone, and he naturally sounds like his father, but that's just genetics. Most of the time he sounds like a deathcore singer. I thought of bands like Shadow of Intent or Fit for an Autopsy. As for the music, at times it sounds very intense, like extreme metal. At other times it had a sound that was more melodic, but at the same time dark. So with that being said, let's go track by track. The album opens with a one minute track called Intro. This just has lots of dark and scary demented noise with lots of feedback. There's not much more to say. It just sets the tone of the album. This goes into the next track called Paint the Skin. This one has some guitar riffs that sound like death metal. There's some rapid fire drum beats and the vocals are very harsh. As I mentioned before, they sound very deathcore like. There's also a lot of creepy sounds in the background, but you have to listen to hear them. I was listening to the song with headphones during my second listen. The band also likes to mix up the genres as well. There were times when the riffs were faster and times when they were slower. And other times it sounded more like thrash with a thick palm muted sound and other times they sounded like new metal. Keep in mind, we're still talking about the first track on the album. So there is a lot put into these songs. After this is a song called Far Side. This is a five minute song and this is where they start to sound like early Slipknot, something along the lines of the first album or Iowa. You can hear this in the down-tuned guitars and the way they made some sounds on the guitar that sounds like a turntable. But also keep in mind, this band is just guitar, drum, bass, vocals, like a metal band. Uh, there's no turntables or there's no anything like that or DJs or any of that. The song has some vocals that remind me of Slipknot. It's not a bad thing, but it's just hard not to make the comparison when you listen to the song, especially when Griffin sings the clean parts of the song. There were also some riffs that sounded like they were taken from a Slipknot song. I couldn't remember exactly which one, but it kind of gave me that I think I've heard it before vibe. After this is a song called Am I the Only One? This one starts with a drum and bass solo, which was kind of interesting. It goes into some heavy guitar riffs and the vocals. I thought this one reminded me of early, you know the band I'm going to talk about. There were some melodic aspects of the song, but they still kept it very heavy. The song is pretty cool. They have a mix of clean and harsh vocals and the guitar sound very thick and heavy at times, but there are also times when they play some heavy chords with lots of dissonance. Next is one of those transitional tracks that's under a minute long. It's called Going Up, has some spooky sounds, weird percussion, and pretty cool because it sounds different than what we have been hearing thus far. This goes into another song called Nihilism, and the main guitar riff was very fast and heavy. The drumming was very intense. The song had a very heavy deathcore sound, but with elements of new metal, and at times sounded like the aforementioned band uh, with Clown and Corey Tabler, and the, they wear masks, and you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the song also has some isolated bass guitar and drum sections. I thought it sounded very good. They also do something I think uh, they learned from their fathers, and as they take a particular line of a song, and they repeat it over and over for dramatic effect. So 
I think when you listen to the album, you'll know what I'm talking about. After this, there's a song called Pitiful. They continue with the heaviness, but this time they seem to move at a slower pace. The song continues with an angry tone. There are lots of riffs, lots of harsh vocals. They bring back some of those death metal elements in the song. And there are some rapid-fire tremolo picking in, the, in addition to gang vocals in the chorus. They continue with a song called Serenity, and this song is anything but serene. It's quite the opposite. It's some heavy, new metal-style guitar riffs, a touch of deathcore. You can st- still hear the Slipknot-isms at time on this track, especially during the sections with the clean vocals. The song is kind of catchy. There's a chorus, and they sing, Someday I will break out of the shell that I have become, and that's something that kind of stuck in my head. There are five songs left in the album. Next song is called Disparager. This one was very fast and heavy with some rapid-fire guitar riffs as well as some thick bass guitar playing. I like the use of the bass guitar in this song as well as the other songs in the album. So this band makes sure the bass player has some presence throughout the album. Then there's a song called Where the Honesty Lies. And this one starts off with some feedback and double bass drumming and it sets the stage for some big guitar riffs. And what's interesting about the song, they use some harmonics on the guitar. It kind of gave it a groove metal or Pantera type of feel. This was pretty good. I like the guitar riffs on this song. And there are three songs left in the album. For some reason, the next three songs are all short songs under two minutes. The next song is called Ones, and it has like this atmospheric, dark playing. There's some chanting in the background. I guess it's kind of like an intro track. And the next one is under two minutes called Downfall, and this has more of a sound like their typical songs or what we have been hearing on this album. And the song has a cool drum solo in the second part, and it's very heavy. And the last song is called As We Know It. It's one minute, and it's just uh, very, uh, you know what it sounds like, very slipknot sounding. So that's all I can say about it. In conclusion, I guess not much more to say about it. I think if new Metal is making a return, this band is going to be at the forefront because they're not just reviving it. They're taking the sound and letting it evolve by taking elements of the sound that was popular 25 years ago and bringing elements of some of that modern metal that I'm sure these young adults have grown up on. I'm talking about the deathcore bands I was talking about, Shadow of Intent or Fit for an Autopsy, those types of bands. So I recommend this album. I think it's pretty good. I give it an 8 out of 10. I think it has potential to go up and maybe make one of my end of the year lists. I think it has a good replay value, even though I haven't spent a lot of time with it. So that is all. Let me know what you thought of the singles or if you have listened to this album. I think by the time I post this, it should be out. So that's all. Thanks for watching. Check out uh, the most recent uh, Slipknot video I did. I'll stick that right here. And um, give this video a like. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe if you're not already. I do rock and metal album reviews. I do rankings. I do tier lists. I do classic album reviews. I do rock as well. And I'll see you in the next one.